Are you a literature lover? Are you tired of reading literature that does not resonate with our time? Do you have questions about literature? If so, welcome to the podcast My Two Cents Worth with Odilia Wakisho, the platform that discusses literature in relation to our times. I am uniquely Kenyan and relevantly African, hence my focus, African literature. This video is a continuation of the series Daring Then Daring Part 2. Please listen till the end, you'll definitely have food for thought. Let us sell in. First and foremost, shout out to Don Collins, a writer and author of the book Morning Shall Come. It is such a great compilation of poems that will spark your imagination and question your character. Grab a copy. Don, the literary conversation was invaluable. A kind reminder, if you're new in my channel, please subscribe. And if you're sort of on and off, kindly, kindly revisit the former episodes to understand any current episode you're in. My previous episode, part one, entailed an interpretation of daring then daring based on literary global context with a mix of self-perceptions. This episode, part two, is designed to give a laid-back, random, yet tangible, literal reality check that guides the understanding of daring then daring in the form of guiding objectives. Do listen. First objective is from an individual point of view. To state the dares that you dared that previously were undaring to you. As a self-testament, what I have dared that appeared to be undared was me opting to pursue literature at postgraduate level. By the way, my preference initially was to do linguistics. Oh, how I love literature now. Secondly, I dared the undared by undertaking a literary research project that was poetry based, away from the typical research projects. As the Kenyan saying goes, if you know, you know. Last but not least is how I dared the undared by finding this gap as my creative space, which is to give forth my two cents worth on African literature and voicing out a redefinition of African literature from the predisposed conceptions into the candid vibration of what resonates with the 21st century Africa that paints a bold picture of true sense of self. Now, my listener, it is your turn to tell me, oh, us, on the comment section below, how you dared the undared. The second objective is from a societal point of view. To describe the daring things that we as an African society have dared to do, yet on the surface, they seem to be undared. Of course, there are a couple of them, especially in the recent years. Please revisit the prelude episode. Nonetheless, to name a few, they are number one. The other thing was the recognition and awareness of why and how it is purely okay to expose one's fragility 
a mark of embracing one's true self no matter what. This is a postmodernist concept that has been dared which seemed to be undead in African society. The second one is the eradication, eradication of gender stereotypes in all spheres of life. The third one, the empowerment of the girl child that its aftermath has surprisingly overpowered the boy child. As the boy child is yet to be groomed on how to cohabit with this empowered girl child. Something so undaring. The fourth one is the redefined African people who have now accepted the wounds and the traumas of colonial past and have now risen against all odds and redefined themselves by making what is what was initially a cake to be cool. An acknowledgement of reclaiming our Africanity. Some of the small scale evidences are, of course, the coming back of kinky afros and natural hair looks. Second one, the passionate pride of African beauty. And the last one, the use of authentic African settings in either music videos or movies. Please add on, the list is endless. Put your comment on the section below. The third objective is from a literary and scholarly point of view. To evaluate the daring moves that African literature has dared against the undared globally. This is worth noting since African literature has time and again been pushing the limits of literariness away from the rigidity of thought. A wave of Africans telling their own stories in their own individualized ways. Such examples include the use of vernacular words in writing, the literally coining words from the local context. Previously, not this. In written forms, such words were italicized. But now, writers write as it is. It is upon the reader to figure it out themselves. Another daring move is in the many fully funded African Literary Prize Awards that aim to celebrate and compel African writers, scholars, and critics to explore their literary creativity to unfathomed lengths. In conclusion, the takeaway idea is that Africans are simply at a stage of bodily expressing who they are with no pinch of doubt of coming out as ruthless on how they have been embodied on how they have embodied themselves globally african literature is steadily becoming newly redefined yet refurbished by breaking into archives to embody its africanity Next episode will unfold part three of interpreting daring then daring African literature that is text based. That's all I have for you today. Kindly subscribe and share this podcast with your family and friends. Thank you and see you next time.